right, Tom in California, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, how you doing, sir? Good. Hey, it's good to talk to you. I've listened to your show for uh, quite a long time now. I just wanted to bring another layer to 9-11 that I think you'll be very interested in. I was a professional airline pilot for 12 years. I have over 10,000 hours of flight time, all the licenses, airline transport license, etc. I was a 747-400 captain for two years for a company called Atlas. Prior to that, I flew the 737 as a captain for seven years. I've done a lot of analysts. Just I'll bring the airplane component into the mix here for 9-11. Back in 2002, 2003, actually 2003. They I'm put sorry. the remote control takeover chip in it. Of course. Well, let, 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 I'll, even, I'll, I'll split hairs even further, sir. If you look at the amateur video of the 767-200 series aircraft that did hit, that pod that's on the bottom, that's called a Ray Dome. That's manufactured by Mark Marietta. It's been manufactured here in the United States for 37 years, exclusively used by the U.S. military to fly Air Force drones. Clearly. A control pod. Team, clearly. That is used only to radio control aircraft and hide an antennae. There are no civilian airplanes that have that pod, period. I challenge anybody to go out. Well, look at the E-4Bs look over New York and D.C. as the attacks happen and then after they happen when all air traffic is shut down with the command pod on top and the American flag on back. Those are the doomsday planes. You know, and, and I want to tell you something. When I looked at the uh, amateur video, I came across that white 747-100 series and I go, what the hell is that? There's no end number on this airplane. It's flying in an orbital pattern. Uh, and as we all know, that, that airplane was present on that day. And I, I, in a nanosecond, I said, wait a minute, that's a flying platform where they radio control these airplanes. One more piece of information, if I may, and that is that if anybody even has half a brain, I know everybody, all your listeners do, thank God, but the people I talk to who are sheeple, and I say to them, look, it's right in front of your face. You say a seven... 57-200 series hit the Pentagon. Where is the debris field? Where are the body parts? Where are the two 10,000-pound CFM engines? Uh, that are hey, on, on National Geographic, they say those giant engines wouldn't even hurt the facade, wouldn't even knock a window out. Right, that's exactly my point. They're not going to bore through six feet of concrete and rebar. You're gonna, they have breakaway bolts, just like when the airplane hit the Hudson and the number two engine tore off on that Airbus A310. It's, they're, they're, they're meant to break away from the engine pylon for an engine fire. This is known for Airbus blowing. Doesn't Let matter. me ask you a question. What would one of those giant engines weighing, I don't know how many tons, do at 550 miles an hour smashing into a concrete face? I can tell you, that, that, first of all, <laughs> to go 550 miles an hour in an airplane and, and, and to, to, for me... To as, hold as it a, down yeah, on the ground, is that impossible? To hold it at 60 feet and try and hit a building, it, that, that would be very, very difficult. You would have to be an extremely skilled pilot. And, and secondly, you're not going to be able to fly that fast because of air compression. So that that's another bogus point For those that don't it. know, there's there, there's more 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 air down close to the ground, more water vapor. Well, well it's, it's, it's called air compression. And, yeah, I understand and, the, 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 the air pressing under the plane's wings. Well, it's just the, the air pressure is, is, is denser, and it's half as dense at 14,000 feet. But my point is is, is that it, it, just, to, just to go with the speed of sound, and, and the, 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 the smoking gun is that there's no debris field. That's the bottom line. There's nothing there. And then when I tell people, I say, look, there's nothing there because a missile hit it. Uh, just one more, if I, one more point, if I may. I was present the day of and the day after. I was based in JFK when TWA Flight 800 got shot down by a Navy missile, and that was the buzz. I talked to an American Airlines flight crew that was landing on the 2-5 complex there and saw the freaking thing get shot out of the sky. Now, they've interviewed over 100, and I think it's 87 members of the military that said, yeah, we were running a drill for missile tests that night. Of course, that, there's an area called Warning Area 105, 80, 80 miles northeast. You can see it on any aeronautical chart. This is where they were doing that. They, they were shooting that out of a, out of a Polaris submarine, and, and it had two forms of, uh, of uh, the primary form of, of tracking was its uh, radar signature. The second was a heat sinking signature, and that primary uh, piece of equipment in that failed, and that's when it tracked and locked onto that, that 747-200 uh, series airplane, and, and, you know, they found molten metal uh, uh, on, on bodies in that plane. Uh, I heard this the next day. And and I, I heard uh, two days after. No, no, they had they had investigators sneak in. They later sent them to prison and got samples, and it had explosive residue. General Benton K. Parton, former head of Air Force Weapons Development, said it was a continuous rod warhead missile. 
exactly. There was a, a, a you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I read this, uh, gosh, 10 years ago. There was a gentleman that wrote a book who worked for Aviation Space Technology, which was a 20-year reporter. And simply, he, he said, this is this stinks. He had an insider go in and take a piece of the back of, of seat number 33F, and he took that to an independent lab, had it analyzed, and found that 99% of the exhaust gases on the back of that uh, piece of material matched a certain Navy missile. And, and then he sent that, of course, to uh, one of the major news uh, uh, agencies, and they intercepted it, and boom, he was in jail that, that same day. So there it is. Absolutely. Continuous rod warhead. When they put the blame back together, you can see where it hit. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Interesting points. Fits in with all the intel we have. You know, the first plane the evidence shows was a drone on the towers as well. Uh, Stewart in New York, Joppa in Texas, Lauren in Ohio, Tommy in Virginia, and everybody else, your call straight ahead at 1-800-259-9231. This is the GCN Radio Network. I'm Alexander Emmerich Jones.